three, two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode here on Inside Movies Galore. I am one of your hosts, but tonight we are going on about one of my selections for this Universal Monsters uh, uh, Month that was chosen. And it is a 1932 film that was directed by Carl Freund. Um, and there's actually a lot of history that goes along uh, uh, with uh, uh, this film, which is kind of interesting. And one of those is uh, once... Um, I believe it was the King Tut's tomb that was unearthed um, back in the day. A, a, a day and uh, for uh, for a while, everything was Egyptian for, uh, for a time. After after it was, you know, unearthed and explored and you know found and all that jazz and so, uh, so uh, they hadn't quite you know put to film like that type of a, a genre uh so to sp uh, uh, speak and i believe carl freund um was the cinematographer for dracula was he not i believe he was um and let me just uh, br bring up what IMDb s <laughs> says about the film. Uh, let's see. IMDb gives it a 7 out of 10. Uh, resurrected Egyptian mummy searches Cairo for the uh, for the girl he believes to be his long lost princess. And uh, you've got writers uh, by the name of Nina Wilcox Putnam, uh, Richard Share, and you got John L. Balderston behind the screenplay. I guess. Uh, John Balderson is behind such films as Gaslight. He was the writer of Frankenstein, uh, Bride of Frankenstein, The Last of the Mohicans. Um, and uh, evidently the, the play version of the, uh, of the uh, Dracula from 1979. Uh, the play uh, or the screenplay of Red Planet Mars uh, and so on and so forth uh, as far as that go it goes. But we do have a interesting cast here uh, of Boris Karloff playing uh, Imhotep, Zita Johan, who is normally... Before this, she was known on Broadway. Anyway, uh, she's a Hungarian actress, um, and she wasn't really in anything really after th uh, this of that much note. I mean, she was in a few things, but you know, uh, she was a very outspoken woman and. I, be, I believe I watched something on her uh, her on the uh, on the universal th uh, things uh, saying that she had a, a <laughs> history with the director here uh Carl Freund because um yeah it was kind of tumultuous relationship and um she didn't really much think highly of the actors and actresses of ho Hollywood in fact, she uh, she said she, uh, she at one point in time she had uh, uh, said to someone that she would uh, uh, she much rather uh, would uh, act alongside the whores of the streets than she would the whores of Babylon or something to that effect. <laughs> 
Uh, but uh, you have David Manners, uh, plays Frank w uh, Wimple, Arthur Byron, um, uh, uh, playing the young, uh, 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 or Sir Joseph w uh, Wimple, and um, Edward Van Sloan as Dr. Mueller, Bramwell Fletcher, among others. Um, so, going into first impressions here. Um, why don't we start with you, Jake, uh, and work our way there. Uh, was this the first time watch for you? <clears throat> no, it was not. Um, but I believe it was my second watch. Um, as I think I alluded to, I don't remember if I really went to go, but I alluded to it in, in, in the last couple discussions. Um, I do have the uh, Universal Legacy collection of this film as well. And this, this was, I thought, this was a cool pickup. I picked it up at Movie Stop for, I don't remember at this point, but I think it was $4. So not a bad, not a bad pickup for, I think it's five films in the collection. Um, and I did watch it a while. I watched all five of the films some time ago. Uh, if I had to wager, probably about eight to ten years ago. Um, it's it's not what I expected, and I had largely forgotten. I remembered really liking it, but. When people think of the uh, like the universal monsters generally, there's a certain uh, expectation, I think you could say, in the general populace of what the films are about and what you're going to get. And, of course, that is not 100% accurate. But <laughs> um, as we said in the Dracula discussion and the Invisible Man discussion, like... There are iconic moments in those films that people remember, whether or not they've seen the film, they know those moments. And I would argue that, I, at least in my life, Frankenstein, uh, well, Frankenstein too. Um, but I would argue this one almost, there aren't as many iconic moments from the original film that people remember. And I think that's partly because people tend to think about the later Mummy film, not like later, later, but like the sequels to this, which really had almost nothing to do with this movie. Uh, those were kind of the ones that got imprinted in everyone's mind. So basically, long and short of it is, you think of Mummy as this sort of bandage-wrapped zombie. And really, he's... He only you only see him in bandages when he's in the sarcophagus in the first place, and he has the imprint of bandages on him throughout the film, kind of like his sort of his skin does look odd. Well, there was actually age uh, makeup on. Well, uh, yeah, Karloff, that's which... what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> they make him look weird, but he's not bandaged and wrapped up like everyone envisions the mummy and he's intelligent and methodical and calculating and has strong magic and again not what people have come to think of as the mummy so when i go back and and, and watch this i'm like oh yeah i forgot about that <laughs> Um, I will say that, uh, as well, maybe I was a little harsher than I needed to be on the last couple of films in terms of the pace as, a, as a, it, it, this one kind of reminded me, uh, further that really that's how most of them were. And, um, I kind of got into this one a little more, I think, um, part of that might've just been, uh, circumstance of when I sat down to watch it, maybe I was more ready for a movie than I was with the last couple. Um, it is a slow paced film. Uh, but yeah, I kind of, uh, I like it. I think it's kind of fun. Um, it's, it's, 
I'm reading a little bit about the, the history behind it, and it, it gives some interesting uh, thoughts there. But uh, yeah, um, like I said, uh, pretty pretty fun. It was it was it was it was, it was fun to revisit, and uh, definitely am glad that we managed to pair this with the, the more recent one, so that we can get a nice little uh, compare and contrast going. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, is that then pretty much, uh, your first impressions? Yeah, that'll do for now. Okay. Uh, heading over to you, Crow, uh, since you just joined us, uh, what was your first impression of this film and was it, uh, uh, is it a first time watch for you? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Crow? You're muted. Okay. Uh, heading over to Forest uh, until we get a uh, uh, crawl here. Um, uh, Forest, uh, your first impressions. What uh, uh, did you? Uh, uh, was this a first time watch for you? Uh, no, far from it. Uh, you, I, I usually every every October. Uh, usually every Oct I mean every October. Around Halloween time, I go back and watch the classic Universal Studios monster movies, including The Mummy. And uh, and it's not, yeah, it's not, yeah, I, I agree with Brandon, like, this is not really, it's, when you're watching, it's kind of surprising, you know, it's not real, that uh, the image of a, of a band, of this, lit, of this bandit, of this bandaged zombie uh, going after people is not, you know, that's not what really this movie is. There's definitely more of a. I guess there's more. This one's more more of a. It's much more mystical. I want to. Uh, if that's. I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, this one. But uh. But it's it's definitely much more mystical. A little more. Maybe I don't know. Maybe a little more su supernatural. Uh, supernatural. Uh, then as uh. Then what came late? Then what came later? I'll admit I have not. I have not watched any of the Mummy sequels. Um, at least in this version, at least in this continuity. Um, but yeah, I think it was a pretty good. But yeah, I re that was really good. Uh, Boris Karloff is ha uh, his he has Emotep is very, I don't know, he's got he's very intent. I don't know what to say, intimidating, but like, uh, very pos not or possessed. I don't know. Uh, like, but he has a pres he has a presence in the movie. Uh, you know, he just stares at you. Just you catch you catches your attention. Um, in some ways, I think he's kind of like it's. Uh, much more, it's like yeah, it's much more akin to like to uh, say Dracula than uh, like a zombie movie. Like 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 Jake was saying, like it's a, like a zombie movie. Um, ah. But overall, uh, I think it's I think it's really it's uh really it's overall I, I enjoy I, you know it's not one of my, one of my favorite, it's not one of, my, one of my top Universal Studios monster movies but I but I but it's enjoyable I watch it every usually watch it every October um I need to get out on the, I need to get on the sequels <laughs> <laughs> uh most definitely because I I I get a kick out of the sequels more than uh, than, uh, than I do this one, but I'll get into that uh, uh, on my first impressions. Uh, uh, going over to uh, Cole, are you here yet? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, was this a first time watch for you? No. No, I've uh, I saw this first when I was a kid, and then. Uh, you know, quite a few years uh, after. Uh, it's the first time in a long time. It's, it's been it's been quite a long time since I've uh, watched any of the Universal monsters um, until I started doing the show again. Um, so I'm I'm glad to be revisiting uh, some of them and uh, like to revisit more of them. Um, some uh, other classics that I enjoy and uh, some some newer ones that I that I enjoy. Um, Speaking of new ones, um, I I do like this version, but the, the mummy with Bernard Fraser is just uh, just in a completely different league. I think um, 
And uh, it's, I was it's, it's more of an it's more indie. It's more of an more of an adventure film. It is, in which I I I, I guess I'm I'm definitely more of an adventure person. So, um, like to watch things, so uh, I definitely prefer, prefer that one. Um, but this one is still good, and it's it's um, Boris Karloff. Um, like you're saying, he he that that stare is is just is just amazing. It's just like you can't look away. Like he hypnotizes you, and uh, as much as I love Dracula, and um, that the performance there, it's like his his eyes are like even more um, hypnotizing um, to look at. Like he just just kind of like dares you to look away. Like if you look away, he's gonna strike you down, you know, and you just have to watch him and 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 you know his presence is just incredible it's like you know when he's there he, all eyes are on him and, and his eyes his eyes are just <laughs> freaking weird <laughs> you know you can't look away you just can't you know um it's 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 uh yeah it's definitely um you know i mean when people think of the mummy um you know, even I've done it. You know, I, I think of the mummy wrapped in bandages, and that's more like a zombie or whatever. And, and, and that's that's not this, you know, at all. Um, you know, there's other movies that have done the mummy where you know that's the mummy, you know, slow walking, like kind of like a zombie, but wrapped in bandages um, that will suck the life out of you. But um, you know, he he's a he just he commands a power. He's, he's kind of like a, a magician, you know, wizard um, that had come back to life, you know, um, more than 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 like a mummy. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I love I love Egyptian and uh, hieroglyphics. Um, I don't really I can't really read them or anything, but I always I always enjoyed them. So um, I definitely like that about this movie. The um, the different the cult that culture. And uh, yeah, so so it's 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 a fun, quick movie, um, you know, re really interesting. And and yeah, definitely the sequels are are fun as well. And uh, you know, like the Evan Costello ones, um, you know, they they end up meeting all of them and and uh, in all of them in one movie too. <laughs> um, so. They're all, they're all fun as well. So I, I enjoy the Universal Monsters. Again, this isn't my favorite either, but um, it's it's up there. I mean, uh, you know, Wolfman and Dracula are my two favorites. Um, but this this is definitely definitely up there. Um, I definitely like it. I enjoy it more than Invisible Man, which we did last week. Which you know, I like that too. But yeah, this was uh, I like this one better, um, and it's fun. So that's my uh, first impressions on this one. Okay. Um, heading over to you, Tammy. Uh, was this the first time watched for you? Oh, no. I know I watched it when I was a kid, and I've seen it many a time since. Um, it's, you know, it's it's up there with, I like it as one of the my favorites from that era. Um, I do agree, though, it is a little bit slower. And I do agree that, um, you know, there's really only a mummy in it at the beginning, <laughs> which is, you know, if it's supposed to be the mummy, you should see the mummy more than just in the beginning. But it actually, um, watching the background stuff on it last night, you know, it is kind of like what started the whole mummy thing. Anyways, even if you only see the mummy once, and even though you only saw the mummy once, you gotta still enjoy Karloff, whether he was the mummy or he was the unmummied mummy. <laughs> he still puts on um, a great performance, so you gotta give him kudos for that. And, you know, it is enjoyable. Um, I mean, I'm glad to have it in my collection. So. But okay. um, that's about it. All righty. Heading, heading over to you, Brandon. Uh, was this the first time watch for you? 
Uh, no, but much like Jake, it's actually I watched it under similar circumstances to Jake. Uh, I, but oddly enough, the first Mummy movie I saw was the Brendan Fraser one from '99. Um, strangely enough, and uh, I remember seeing that and having the exact same thought process. Which is where? Where's the traditional mummy with all the bandages? Why are we dealing with Brendan Fraser's character so much? <laughs> and uh, you know, so when I got to this one, I said I finally saw it, and I watched all the sequels originally. And I said, "Oh, so that's where it gets all of that." It actually is trying to be somewhat true to the original when it comes to how the character is in that mummy they make it much more action-packed and all of that but there's a lot of similarities between the two um and both of them don't go with that traditional mummy uh concept that's in my mind they go with uh well that this version of the mummy and i did like that that there was a more of a i mean yes the movie is a bit slower in a lot of ways but i do like uh kind of the methodical way that this character manipulates and goes to get his way, which is basically the same goal as the mummy in the 99 film. Uh, just he does it in a more sneaky way. Uh, his powers are less like, oh my gosh, he's you using the plagues to destroy everything. It's more of a, uh, he's very good at mind controlling and manipulating people, which I did like that. So um i think overall it was a good film to revisit i do like the sequels better but uh this one is uh, a pretty decent one okay and uh my introduction to the uh, uh to the mummy films were actually through the sequels uh for uh, first i did not get a chance to see the, uh, the mummy until uh like way after until i actually had the uh, legacy cole uh, collections myself so i I think I have at least seen the original, uh, this mummy version of the mummy, maybe twice, if not three times in my lifetime. Uh, but I have seen the sequels over and over. I used to have the mummy's hand, the mummy's ghost, the mummy's curse, and the mummy's tomb all on VHS at one point in time. Uh, back when Suncoast actually sold VHS, I ended up buying them for like $3.99 a piece, like brand new. <laughs> um, and uh, that was cool to have in my uh, my VHS collection at one, uh, at one point. And they were crisp and clear uh, even then for me. So, uh, but um, having said that, I now as a, as you know, with my mindset uh, since I've been a film reviewer and, uh, and whatnot and discussing films with you guys, see it with a new perspective because, you know, I have an interest in like some of the history and the background. And, you know, there are some beats that, uh, that this film goes along with that are fairly similar to the Dracula film. And I wondered why. And it turns out that Carl Freund is in, and was, in fact, the cinematographer behind Dracula. And uh, so you can definitely see that carrying over to this. I mean, uh, it, it, during one of the documentaries behind it, uh, it they actually showed like uh, scenes from Dracula and scenes from, uh, from this that kind of mimicked each other uh and uh one of them was the fact that that necklace of isis is fairly similar to the cross that uh, that was in dracula uh, except used differently you know and then um you've got the whole romance thing going on uh, uh where you know he, he's gotta come and uh, like uh, get her, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, 
Yeah. But let's go into uh, the um, plot. Um, so in the very beginning, uh, we have a dig that has evidently happened. And it looks like they're cataloging things for the British Museum exhibit that the, the, these artifacts are going to eventually be going to a British Museum after this. And there is a mummy uh, that is um, in, a, in a carcophagus, uh, slightly behind a doctor, a, I, I would say a, I would say a historian of sorts, um, and a young paleontologist like dude, uh, 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 dude who just so happens to be along like for the ride, you know. And uh, we have them explaining that there is a box that is near uh, nearby, uh, by, and they want to open it. And, and uh, and stuff like that uh, that and they pull it out and there is an inscription on it that says uh, uh, says he, he who um <coughs> this box will basically die you know um and uh the historian guy, uh, guy gets spooked and he actually um doesn't want anything to do with it. In fact, he, 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 he and the doctor go out, uh, go outside uh, the pl place, leaving the young man inside. And uh, he basically uh, tells them, "Hey, um, I believe that those are the scroll uh, uh, scrolls of thought, uh, uh, Toth, and we should not be messing with that. That is a, cur uh, a curse that uh, that was put on by uh, by the, uh, the, uh, the ancient Egyptians, and we should not fuck with this shit. <laughs> you know. So, uh, but me, uh, while they're talking, the uh, the young man, um, kind of uh, 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 think what his name was uh, uh, was real uh, real quick. Uh, his name, I believe, was Ralph Norton played by Branwell Fletcher. Well, he uh, he kind of gets some itchy fingers and decides to open up the box and uh, unrolls the scrolls and he doesn't realize that the mummy has gotten up and <laughs> basically stuck his hand, hand uh, basically on the scroll and I guess he kind of watches him walk off with it. And he goes quite mad from that. And I guess ultimately we find out later that he actually not only did he go mad, but he actually died like tragically. Um, and and shortly after the, uh, this, that we get a um, a scene where um, it's evidently ten or twenty years later. Um, and but uh, did anyone uh, have anything to say about that very beginning scene? Where, I mean, you, you well, obviously get that classic scene where the, 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 the Boris Karloff underneath that mummy sh uh, mummy makeup and all that jazz it begins is, to open his eyes. It is worth noting that in addition to Karloff, who starred in Frankenstein and came fairly close to starring in Dracula, you do have a key actor who was in all three. Uh, Mr. Edward Van Sloan is our Dr. Milton Mueller. And he was Van Helsing, which is one of the, uh, you mentioned similarities with Dracula. He is very much a Van Helsing type character in this one, I think. Uh, plays a similar role in the plot. <laughs> but... Uh, and then, of course, he was Dr. Waldman in Frankenstein. I can't remember where he fell with that one, but yeah, that was interesting. But yeah, they should have known when they left that dude alone, he was going to go into the box. It was, there was They knew that. Well, I was expecting some kind of like acid to like 
suddenly like spring from the box or something like that. But I don't think we learned anything about that until it, it, later uh, mummy movies, you know? I um, I was thinking uh, his, his screaming and his laughing, I mean, was kind of kind of loud um i don't know it's just slightly uh obnoxious kind of like uh screaming in some other movies um so it was it was uh painful to listen to um, he was gibbering maniacally yeah it was just uh, a little bit a little bit too loud um but like i said again with that overacting thing um it was just a little bit too much um i mean you definitely you de it definitely you know, made you think, oh, yeah, he went mad. You, you definitely drove that point. But I think he could have drove the point with uh, without, you know, laughing quite so loud and um, man manically. <laughs> because, you know, it was, it was freaking loud. Have. You know, I watched this on my computer, which doesn't tend to be too loud. Um, but this this movie was loud. And then when he laughed, it was, it was like, really loud. Like echoing through the house <laughs> and i didn't have it up that high uh, at all so um it was pretty loud it's one of, i liked it it was it, it was it was enjoyable um you know i was thinking the movie was gonna see it's been a long time since i watched it so you know i'm confusing with other stuff so i'm thinking the movie's gonna come out and kill him you know i was even like you know curiously killed the architect and well in, in a in a roundabout way it did but not from the mummy. The mummy didn't touch him. You know, the mummy just grabbed the, the, the paper, the um, you know, the ritual, and walked off. <laughs> you know, well, and it, he, it drove the dude. He made a very offhand comment, which was a little eerie when he said it. Uh, he said, he said, <laughs> the uh, he decided to have a walk. Or something like that, you know. Yeah. yeah. For a walk or so. Yeah, I can't remember the exact wording, but yeah. He did. It was a. Uh, it was good. But uh, for getting that beginning, let <laughs> me see. Does anyone think that that alone uh, was intimidating, at least for the uh, the beginning piece or segment? I mean. Well, I think. Intimidating for 1932, definitely. Yeah. They did a fair job of saying, uh, sh shit's about to go down. But they, you know, you had to wait and see. But I will admit, when the mummy just walked right out of the room without touching him, he just grabbed the scroll and left. That kind of <laughs> surprised me. But then the guy right. just starts maniacally laughing. Oh, and that's you were you were expecting like an immediate death. Uh. <laughs> well, you know, more the traditional kind of like he rushes him and chokes him or something. You know, you weren't expecting him to just walk out of the room and the guy goes mad from the from I don't know it broke him somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh... It's definitely weird the way they did it because like i said my memory was was that you know he, he, he killed him you know like you said choking him or whatever well um, i'm trying but, to think whether it was 10 or 20 years later i think it was just 10 years later or something like that yeah it was 10 years later like 1930 or uh, well, when the second, the second, I believe it was 1932. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Present day. <laughs> so the present day is 1932. We have another dig going on, and they, they don't seem to be like finding much of anything. They're, they're, they seem to be like at their last, you know, uh, depth of everything. And that's when. Ardak Day um, gets introduced. Uh, he is a well, and he gets introduced kind of mysteriously because he doesn't exactly like give his name right off. He has to be asked, but he, he's basically there to say, "Hey, um, I happen to know where like this 
ancient uh, uh, tomb is buried. Uh, it's like five clicks away. It's not that far away. I can show you. And and there and uh, you take it takes them to the spot, and then he kind of disappears on them. Uh, and uh, they they basically say, hey, we, well we can like get some of our workers over here, and we can see what uh, uh, what happens. And if we see something, we see something. And they uh, they start uncovering steps and uncover a whole sarcophagus and artifacts. Uh, which ultimately get carried over to uh, an exhibit in the museum, and they're all excited, uh, you know? Uh, they, uh, they... For the, for the <laughs> fracas and come. I do like that there's a brief time where they talk about, uh, should we really be taking these over to, you know, Great Britain? And, right. And they're like, you know, and they give that, it's like, this is the precedent of the British Museum, which is truth, because they took a lot of artifacts away from their cultures. Yeah. And then uh, later... Oh, one of the things that uh, the professor did, uh, I believe it was Professor Wimple, yeah. uh, uh, it kept saying what, it was something about, uh, about oh, science. You know, for science! Uh, for science! <laughs> yes. But yeah, <laughs> that's interesting, though, that they, that they knew even back then, which would have been uh, back in that heyday of, oh, well, it would have still been in the heyday of British imperialism yeah. in a lot of ways. And so, you know, it just is uh, kind of funny that they were even able to say, eh, this is kind of shady that you're doing this. So it was just kind of cool to see that because this is something you would expect to hear now, but not in 32. <laughs> I did like how the son said, you know, I kind of was grousing about, it. I can't believe they got to keep it here at the Cairo museum. And his dad's like, well, yeah, it's theirs. <laughs> you know, basically yeah, yeah. in so many words. Uh, so that was kind of cool. Yeah. And you get, uh, you get Arctic Day coming to the uh, the museum exhibit, and you get the professor recognizing that he it, 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 him. Uh, at first, they were like, "Hey, you can't be it, it be here. The museum is clo uh, clo uh, closing." And then they're uh, they're like, "Oh, wait a minute! You're Arctic Day. You're that Arctic Day. Oh, we should be thankful for you." Uh, <laughs> and he takes him back to his office, and he. he uh, not that uh, that like conversational, and he's like, "I'll leave you at your peace." And the son's like, yeah. "You know that dude's kind of creepy." Well, yeah, that and he's you said not that conversational, but he's also kind of standoffish. He very explicitly says, "I don't like being touched." You know, kind of. He's very, uh, <laughs> very, very uh, interesting Mystery. fella. And um, does anyone did anyone catch the significance of the name Ardeth Bay? Um, no. Well, it's an it's an anagram of the of the phrase "death by Ra." <laughs> I'm like, huh. I'm like that's, that's kind crazy. of fun. Yeah, <laughs> the. Uh, at least that's what it claims on this trivia, but I'm like, that makes perfect sense, you know. He has the spirit of vengeance, and at least in his mind, uh, sort of. Okay. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> and I guess it's shortly, uh, he he gets invited to a party that uh, that is evidently going to be going on that night, uh, which another character that, uh, that, uh, 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 we have soon to uh, meet is Helen Grossbinner, who is evidently um, staying around so uh, 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 someone who was a friend of her family's. And she's looking off into the distance and she uh, she is being called by, uh, by Ardoth uh, Day from somewhere else. Um, and he keeps saying like, the name Anaxana uh, uh, Moon. Uh, it's hard to say that name. Anaxana Moon, or he did pretty good with it. And he seems to have this like Merlin 
esque quality about him when, right. when he's doing that because anytime I've ever seen like something with Merlin, he's looking through like wells or or water or something <laughs> like that. Um, and that's kind of what he reminds me of like a Merlin like character because uh, he's he's evidently got some kind of power um, and it's because the scrolls were read at uh, at uh, by that guy who had been driven mad uh, is why he was brought back to life you know those scrolls are Apparently, the uh, la language of the uh, the dead, basically, to make one who was dead alive, you know, and uh, that's what those scrolls were. And once they were read, he was, you know, he's. I think that's why he started. He started to look more like a man than a mummy, you know gives it, it gives it kind of a a reason why he looks the way he does whereas in the sequels it's three tana leaves that brings uh, 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 that keeps him uh, uh, him uh, 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 Karis alive uh, for those who know those stories <laughs> but um we we see her um Helen, uh, being, uh, I would say, called, at least the audience does, and I guess she uh, she gets taken out of her reverie by, uh, by uh, the people that uh, she's there with, and uh, she ends up dancing with a couple of partners, but still, she's, again, you know, called from that place in fact she i think she ultimately ends up at the museum around the same time that Arda day is evidently inside the museum and he's caught by uh, uh like one of the museum guards th that's there but i guess he doesn't live long <laughs> um because the uh, the next day, um, I think the professor was all uh, all like talking about about how they had had a murder happen at, at the museum, and they weren't sure why, and they found they found the scrolls there, and so they uh, they. Uh, what did y'all think about uh, uh, that? And you know, we also have the. the the son of the professor um, seems to, um, when he first meets Helen, uh, seems to have that instant love at first sight thing, you know. Um, what do you all think about all that? Uh, I mean, it's traditional to have a love story in almost every old school picture. Uh, and besides, you have the handsome lead and the beautiful um, uh, heroine uh, with this whole thing. So, you know, I mean, otherwise, I always look at the rest of this as character establishment and cloak and dagger time, because that's uh, that's pretty much the whole of the central part of the movie. <laughs> Uh, and what do we think of Helen as a character? I mean, um, it appears that um, she seems to be, uh, uh, be called by Arctic Day, um, as she is essentially the lead of a uh, lead woman of this uh, 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 film, and ultimately we find out that she is the encompassing vision of what we we kind of later learn that um Arak day is in fact imhotep um and his father 
was a pharaoh, and we, and we learned that. Um, I believe we have a moment where uh, where Helen, uh, it, it, Helen actually goes over to Arctic Days like residence or wherever he's staying, and uh, she ends up taking the dog with her. And she ultimately, uh, uh, she ultimately gets shown a vision in the water uh, that basically kind of tells, like, the fact that um, he was at one point in time in Motep. Uh, um, he, I believe it was at the uh, funeral of his his love um which was an oxima moon uh because they had her in a casket and because she had died he went to steal the um the scrolls of Toth, which were evidently under the uh, under anubis i believe um and he went to go and do some type of ceremony to bring her back from the uh, dead or, uh, or something like that. And he was caught and then he was then entombed. And that, that was pretty much that, you know? Um, and oh, yeah. uh, what do y'all think about that? I mean, I do like that they basically is like they were super offended. They didn't just bury him, but they made sure that he wasn't going to heaven or hell. That he was just going to be stuck. Yeah, <laughs> that that's like no. Nah, not only are you going to jail, you going to jail for eternity. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of kind of creepy about you know he was buried alive like that. You know, which is oh, just imagine his own being, father ordered it. <laughs> being wrapped up like that and being in there and there and that's that's it you know you're just well in, <laughs> in the meantime you've got the professor and the uh, and the son and whoever else is is with, with him um are basically figuring out like who who imhotep is and uh, that he's after the scroll and he's he also seems to be after um helen but uh i do believe that uh, that the the osiris necklace was given to <laughs> the son of the professor as a protective name a uh, th uh, thing so that he could uh, he, that uh, that the sun could be protected from whatever harm that uh, that uh, Arctic Day was actually bestowing on uh, on uh, around because you know uh, they had to figure out how to eventually destroy um, the said scrolls and the so-called. Imhotep, and I don't think it, 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 it the, their plan that they instigate or start to put into play it entirely all works the way they think it does because even though he's told not to give the necklace to um, Helen in any capacity, he does <laughs> but he's lucky he was actually uh, uh, the son was actually able to uh reach the doorknob before too uh, too much longer because otherwise he would have befelled the same fate as the uh, the professor which the professor uh was choked to death um and then that servant 
steals the scrolls. You know, what did y'all think about the uh, the uh, in uh, the that supernatural death of the professor? Anyone? It was neat that he. <laughs> it was neat that he get the, uh, a neat show of his powers by showing that you know yeah. that he could do that. So yeah, did anyone notice uh, uh, the ring on uh, Karloff's I did. finger? Yeah, I did. I believe it. It was in the shape of a scarab. If I'm not mistaken. correct, so I, I believe that scarab ring was, was in fact part of his power. In uh, I think because he would actually use it against certain people. Uh, 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 people he actually pointed the uh, the ring at some. And people. when that that servant actually like kissed it, I think. Well, he was a powerful sorcerer even before his death, so makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what he was called? I don't uh, know exactly, but I know he was a magician of some sort. Didn't, they, didn't know, they call him like a, a priest or a, something? Yeah, they called him a priest, but right, um, maybe he was yeah. a high priest. And remember yeah. the the scroll, uh, which he was uh, basically excommunicated for was the one to bring people back to life. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently scarab beetles were seen by the Egyptians as a symbol of renewal and rebirth. So he may have had that ring as part of his priestly duties, but it wouldn't surprise me if he had found, made or acquired said ring to help with the ritual. Um, yeah. Well, but, he's all uh, about bringing his girl back. <laughs> and I, I, I do want to say, as far as the uh, that scene you were talking about, well, uh, of course well, he had the the houseman uh, come in and get the uh, the scroll for him. I liked his trick of lighting something in the fireplace to make it look like the scroll was burned first. Uh, it took the uh, the good doctor a while to realize the trick, but. <laughs> Ultimately, he did. Well, yeah, it's a good thing that, that the doctor was uh, uh, not entirely believing uh, that that was the scroll. Because at first he was like, oh, good. The, uh, the, your father uh, had burned the scroll. But, uh, but you know, he, he actually pocketed, you know, some, uh, some of the burning uh, burn clippings. Just to uh, to make sure, you know. Uh, but um, yeah, um, ultimately we learned that uh, the plan of Arduk Day was to um, use the body of Helen to bring back the soul of his Anaxima uh, Moon. Uh, it, it, the love of his life, which one of the things that I, I had learned uh, about in one of the documentaries is uh, there were some cutscenes of some various timelines that we actually see the uh, 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 the soul of a Noxima Moon uh, go through. Um. Uh, I think one was like a Viking period. One was like a middle a, a middle aged uh, era, and so on and so forth. Um, definitely some time periods that were cu uh, cut to show the the various like times that uh, that maybe uh, this had been tried before and failed. You know. Uh, that's something that we don't get that uh, uh, that it's happened before <laughs> but um it's poignant uh, that uh, that we should know that uh, that uh this is what he's trying to do he's trying to br bring her soul ba uh, 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 back and 
and uh, there, there is a ritual that uh, that he has to have a go th uh, go through. And I'm I'm not sure why he burned the original mummy's uh, the the Noxima Moon mummy body because didn't he like set it aflame? Yeah, well, he said that that um, he could bring her back, but he she had just be basically. She'd be like a, a mindless zombie, and he wants her, you know, like back, you know, as as his, you know, darling uh, woman. So that's why he uh, wants of her her soul into uh, the, the this other woman that that looks just like her, um, so, because he can't use her original. He uses the original body. She'll just be she'll just be like a regular mummy. <laughs> Yeah, and the whole reason why he was able to get her there uh, was, in fact, uh, 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 because the son had actually taken the necklace off and stuck it around her doorknob. And uh, he tried, uh, Arduk Day tried to use his powers to, uh, to choke the life out of the son, but, uh, but he was actually able to, like, grab onto the onyx at the last moment. But, uh, but uh, uh, because that necklace fell from the door, that allowed, you know, the, uh, Helen to actually leave uh, the, uh, the room with, uh, through the uh, through the powers of hypnotism by Arctic Day to that place that uh, that he had set. I believe it was the actual Egy Egyptian museum that uh, the he chose for yeah. to have the ceremony at it's actually interesting that when when they get there too she's like uh you know i love you once but you know not not anymore like like you know just let me go like <laughs> you know <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't want any part of being uh brought back to life and you know she thinks it's it's you know it's it's horrible to so be brought back to life and she she you know she and she, and she realizes, you know, she's not just she's not alone in the body. There's someone else there, and and she's like, she doesn't want to share a body with this woman. She she just wants isn't to isn't there something put in peace. That, isn't there something you know? that he he wants the servant to do, and he just literally gets scared and backs away. Yeah, she well she asks the servant to save her because uh, she she she's a princess, right? So the servant should listen to what she says because and she she you know wants him to stop. Uh, the mummy and, and uh, the mummy just uses the powers and like you know you you may be a princess but you know he has magical powers so you know yeah yeah that serpent powers. was known as just yeah. the Nubian yeah <laughs> yeah she was uh so yeah she she and then she was like praying um um to get help and and because she didn't want to be um. Taking up, she didn't want to take over that body and, and be forever uh, in in his thrall. You know, I mean, she she's like, you know, she loves you all at once, but you know, that was thousands of years ago, dude. Get over it. You know, <laughs> you know, talking well, about then, uh, not taking a no for an she, answer. <laughs> after that, she came towards him and sa said that she was no longer afraid, and. I, be, uh, I believe that's when uh, when he had her uh, her lay, uh, lay down in um, a position to uh, to have him start the ceremony. But about that time, I think is when uh, when the son uh, woke up from the uh, from uh, with the doctor's help, and uh, they, uh, they he was like, "Hey, now uh, uh, now I think uh, we uh, we know exactly where he is." Let's go to the museum and st and uh, stop this thing from happening, you know? And so yeah. they're on their way. And I believe they get there, and they get there, like, in the nick of time. But, uh, but, uh, but it's not them who destroys them, uh, destroys him in the end. It, it, it actually turns out to be one of the gods that ends up uh, uh, destroying him in the end. Oh, yeah. End up uh, burning the scroll. Yeah. That was kind of a surprise moment. You know, the right. first time that I saw this. Like, well, he kept saying to burn the scroll. 
Yeah. Yep. But um, once the scroll was burned, then it seemed like um, it, he turned to dust, basically. Um, I mean, you see a skeleton on the floor, and you see uh, see a slight melting of transformation, you know. But um, that's when the doctor uh, 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 says for the uh, uh, for the, uh, the 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 dude, um, uh, the the young uh, uh, man, um, to um, call her back for, uh, uh, because if you don't. You might lose her forever, you know, because at that point in time, her soul was stuck in limbo. <laughs> uh, it was sort of like a Snow White moment. <laughs> True yeah. love will bring her back. <laughs> and that, it, it pretty much ends abruptly there, you know. Um, and then, <laughs> then, of course, you. I, I was... I always get a kick out of the ending uh, 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 screen, uh, screen uh, that uh, says the end, and then in the corner it uh, says, "This is a universal picture." Like, like we didn't already know that, you know? You might not. <laughs> <laughs> that that's like their brand, their stamp. Like, uh, like, remember, folks, this is a universal picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. Did anyone have anything they wanted to say about anything that I, uh, that I've talked about, uh, 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 about that they didn't while I was talking about it? Okay. I guess uh, uh, we'll go into production then. Um, I mean, the production was really spectacular for the time. I mean, the makeup was on point. Uh, a lot of the costume design was really good, and even the sets were pretty cool. Uh, to me, nothing looked unbelievably fake or off-putting, so I thought that it was really well done for a film of its time. Okay. What about you, Crow? Uh, what did you think about production? Yeah, I mean, pretty much what he said, you know, uh, everything looked... Uh, pretty good and you know definitely yeah for its time uh it, it was uh it was it was it was done it was done well um you know the the, the mummy coming to life and and uh you know coming out and uh you know and and the and the powers that he he displayed uh everything was done uh pretty, pretty uh pretty interesting you know they uh nothing really uh stands out as, as fake um you know, like in, in Dracula, we had that we had the bat and a couple other scenes, but uh, I didn't really notice anything in this one. So they uh, seem to have done a little bit better job on this one. Um, so, and the same cinematographer. So, you know, seem to have done a better job on on this one than, than uh, Dracula. Um, you know, Dracula is uh, more of a favorite of mine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that was my thoughts on it. What about uh, you, Jake? What did you think about production? I mean, again, I would say it's probably in line with most of what I've seen from that time. Uh, I did feel like, I mean, I feel like they did a fair job with it. Um, I had no real, no real complaints. Uh, like I said, given given the uh, the time period they were filming in, um, it's a decent looking film. Okay. What about you, Forrest? Uh, did you, uh, uh, what did you think about production? Uh, same way I feel, I feel about a lot of the Universal Studios, a lot of those, a lot of the Universal Monster movies. I think they have great, uh, the, the costumes, the sets, and the sets are really well done, are very well done. Um, special effects are, you know, they're good for what they, for, for, the, for the time, uh, for the 1930s. Um, all the music and then the music. I mean, it's just they're just it's just a lot of classic, a lot of a lot, uh, classical. It's really just really just classical music. A lot of just classical music. Um, I mean, I feel like I kind of I feel like when it comes to music, Frankenstein Frankenstein was one of the more was probably the standout of that era. 
Um, so over here, the music doesn't really didn't really stand out to me. But uh, otherwise, yeah, the yeah the costumes, set design, make the uh, makeup, uh, especially on Boris Karloff, was really good. Okay, uh, what about you, Tammy? Uh, what did you think about the production? I thought the production was great. I mean, we watched it behind the scenes to so know that it was. It took like eight hours just to get him into that forest since that makeup, and they were talking about that it was um, a little painful even trying to get out of that makeup, and um, they had talked about how they how they did it and everything to make it make it look so the lines and everything and it was um they really went all out on trying to make him look like like not a mummy anymore but still kind of you know creepy you know um <laughs> well, yeah he's supposed to be thousands of years old you know <laughs> right i mean so um you know when they were when they were doing the digging and they found the princess you know that background and everything looked you know real authentic about where they were and everything um i think the costumes yes were very good um i think the music that was in the background was right for the movie i mean i don't think they did an over abundance of music but um yeah i think like everything everything went together really nicely and you know and it made it made you think that it was you know that they really were in these area these settings and their wardrobe and everything was good i have to agree with all of you on uh, various aspects of the production myself um i thought for for its time uh, for not having like set on film the image of uh what 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 a mummy was supposed to look like uh they did a pretty decent job uh, job i mean uh from what i heard the makeup uh, of that you know age makeup that was on boris karloff that took like 13 hours to put on him so be it having to be able to like sit through that many hours just to prepare him for that particular dual role because he played a dual role uh, first as you know the mummy and then as Ardak the Ardak day you know so but then so, uh, so did um, so did the uh, the woman who played Helen um zeta johan which the last movie that she actually played in was a independent movie called raiders of the living dead which has like three cuts out there <laughs> which was like 50 years after her previous last role <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> which was a a strange uh, role because she played a, li a librarian <laughs> But um, in any case, um, yeah, um, and those of you who didn't uh, talk about music, uh, probably talk about that for a, mo a, a moment. What did y'all think about the music? Well, they kicked it off with the same classical piece they used for all the other Universal films, but I believe this one did have some original music, if I'm not mistaken. I just didn't notice it very, very much. Well, the music was done by James Dietrich, which apparently he was the composer of Leopard Men of Africa. And looking backward, uh, backwards, uh, he did a lot of short fil uh, film compose, uh, po uh, posing uh, uh, during the 30s. But... Um, Looking ba uh, backwards to uh, to where he did the, the, the okay, 
they just had to get married. He did after the uh, uh, this, but uh, but he really was uh, wasn't. He uh, 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 really wasn't a feature film composer. It looks like he did a lot of short films. It, okay, so the earliest one uh, he he did some silent film stuff too. Um, Trolley Troubles, O oh Teacher, The Mechanical Cow, Great Guns, All Wet, The Ocean Hop. Uh, those were all like in the 20s. So, uh, so he definitely did a, a lot, but nothing that I know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, but uh, anyone else want to comment on the music? Uh, maybe Troll or Brandon? Mm -hmm. Got nothing to say. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Nothing to say. All righty. Uh, let's go uh, with favorite character and our favorite scenes. And maybe uh, we, uh, uh, shall we go with uh, what is your favorite mummy movie? Hmm. And that can include your favorite mother. <laughs> That's a little off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll just stick with mummies for right now. But if you uh, if you want to uh, if you want to start, uh, Kroll, uh favorite scene and our favorite characters. Um, um, I don't know. The uh, son was a, a cool character, I guess. Um, but I don't know. I, I gotta say, though, you know, in the top. Um, you know his his stare. I mean, Boris Karloff is just so amazing. Even though um, he he's the villain, you know. And, and again, I don't, I don't ever root for villains, um, but I have to say he's he's probably the favorite character. I mean, um, the if you want, you go with 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 you know traditional hero. You know, the son, I guess, is is the hero, and and so he's you know. Um, yeah, you know, and, and the girl. I mean, I, I love her line when she's like, you know, haven't I been through enough that then to um, um, be made love to by a stranger? You know, because he's professing her love to her. You know, and I, just, I just love that line. You know, um, she's like really cool about it. You know, not um, saying no, but just saying maybe not right now <laughs> type thing. And it was just, uh, it was. Uh, Probably pretty risque for the thirties, you know. Um, you know, just her saying that, you know. Um, especially you know, they just met, they're not obviously not married or anything. And, you know, I, I definitely say that's definitely not seen um in, in the thirties in movies too often or heard. So uh that was probably that was probably uh um definitely the best line in the movie. And um as far as scenes go, um, probably the ending when uh, he he, he uh, bit the dust, <laughs> literally. And uh, as far as favorite mummy movies go, I, I have to go with the Brandon Fraser um, uh, movies. Um, they were just really awesome, and um, you know, I, I know they're definitely a different. Different type. I mean, their mummy was definitely more more to the aching of, of this one than the traditional mummy. Um, but yeah, they, they just kind of went um, extreme with it, and I like extreme. Um, I like the adventure adventure of it. Um, you know, which is fun. Brandon Fraser was a really great actor then. I mean, uh, still a good actor. Um, looks a little different. <laughs> Put on some weight and got a little older, but like we all do. Um, but yeah, I, I really uh, and uh, even you know everyone that was you know supporting cast of, of those movies were fun. And uh, Emotep now, um, the Emotep in that one I liked, but he's got nothing on Boris Karloff with with those eyes and and and, and just 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 you know. Um, Stare, he, he, he just he demands you to look at him, you know. And you can like I said before, it's like if you look away, he'll kill you, you'll die, you know. Just it's it's so crazy, so crazy how how uh 
you know, his stare is just, just, you know, forces you to look at him. <laughs> but yeah, that's my, uh, that's my uh, thoughts on that. So one th uh, 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 before I go, uh, 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 go into other pe uh, people, I just wanted to, uh, to say this little uh, 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 thing. You know, in the beginning, I, I said uh, th that this film uh, was kind of inspired by Pharaoh Tutankhamun's tomb and the alleged curse it contained. Well, evidently, the screenwriter of this fil uh, film, he was present as a, as a reporter for the New York world at the time of, uh, of uh, that they opened the sarcophagus of King Tut in 1925. So, uh, but uh, heading over to Brandon, uh, uh, favorite character, favorite scene, and maybe favorite mummy movie. Well, um, I guess the, the main mummy would be my uh, favorite character um and not a lot sticks out for me in this one uh favorite scene uh probably um i guess that end scene with the uh where uh the kind of the god comes back to comes to life and uh burns scroll i thought that was kind of cool and um Favorite mummy movie? I mean, I have kind of a special place in my heart for I have a special place in my heart for uh, there's one particular for the uh, Brendan Fraser ones with the uh, return uh, the mummy returns is my favorite but I will say that there was a mummy movie, and maybe y'all can tell me which one this is, because I cannot figure out the, for the life of me. But there was a mummy movie about this... Uh, oh, uh, also Bubba Hotep, by the way. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but as far as, like, mummy movies, there was one movie about this guy, the scientist that found this mummy that they unearthed, and uh, it had all this these weird spores on it. Then the mummy came to life, and all the spores became this weird acid stuff on on the mummy, and was burning people alive when the mummy would attack them. And I cannot think of what. Are that... you talking about the American mummy? No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was a horrible movie. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, I guess it'd be the, that would be the opposite of my favorite mummy movie, but uh, but I've been trying to figure out what that one is for years. It was like an '80s or '70s or '80s film, and I can never remember. I cannot figure out for the life of me Could what the title is. Dawn of the Mummy. Oh, no, Dawn of the Mummy. Um, or Tale of the Mummy. Hmm. Because Tale of the Mummy had Julian Sands. In it, and then Dawn of the Mummy was an '80s movie where uh, where where the mummies were in fact more like zombies. Because like, it was just fact, it was like the Night of the Living Dead version of the uh, of mummies. So because <laughs> it was definitely only one mummy, and like I say, it was just the weird thing was like I say it was covered with these like the spore type thing, and then it turned to acid when the mummy came to life and we eat people alive if it got on them but i cannot remember what the darn thing was hmm. but that would probably be my favorite one if i could ever find it again but in any case uh, that's that's fine <laughs> okay um what about you dick well um we're doing Favorite character, favorite character, or and or favorite scene and favorite movie, movie, movie if you have um, As characters, I'm almost gonna say 
I'm almost going to say that the mummy himself, Ardeth Bay, might be my favorite one here. Although I did, I did like Doctor Mule. I mean, you know, even though he basically felt like Van Helsing rewarmed, I kind of liked him. Doctor Wemple, I, I I liked, although I liked him more at the beginning. He he just kind of got weaker as the movie went on. I thought. Um, but I guess I could go with you know Imhotep slash uh, Art of Bay is the favorite as far as um moments received. Oh, uh, um, that's a little harder to call. Um, maybe the scene where he comes to call upon the doctor looking for that scroll and they're all there and they're all having that conf confrontation and he's like right up in Helen's face and it's all creepy and everyone else doesn't know what to do. as. It was an interesting scene. <laughs> yeah, because they had an interesting stare down moment. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm not really sure that I have a clear favorite, but that one comes to mind. Um, as far as favorite mummy movies, this was probably my favorite of the old school ones. Although, again, I have to go back and see some of the others. I really don't remember them well. The uh, the first mummy movie that I saw, if I had to get, if I had to to, to hazard a guess, I want to say the first proper mummy movie I saw probably was The Mummy Returns, which I actually did see in theaters, and then I went back and saw the other one afterwards. Um, and I don't, and I really do like those two movies, and I don't know if I would say that they're a clear favorite. I have to agree with Brandon that you have to at least mention Baba Hotep. I was disappointed by it, but I still thought it had its great moments. Um, and I'm kind of surprised we haven't talked about that one on this channel, honestly. Um, but, uh, yeah. And I guess I'll, I'll talk more on that next week about why I like those more. But, um, uh, I probably would have to go with um, with the mummy returns. Maybe edging. I, I I can't remember which one would be number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, heading over to you, Tammy. Uh, favorite scene, favorite ca uh, character, and our favorite mummy movie. Um. Well, I guess my favorite character, of course, is the mummy. Um, favorite scene. Um, although you don't, I th I think my favorite scene is when um she goes to his place and the smoke comes over that water, and he's telling her <clears throat> he's telling her the story basically. Of who he is and what happened. I think that's my favorite scene. Favorite mummy movie. Um, I guess I probably have to say the Brendan Fraser one that we're going to do next week. Okay. Uh, what about you, Forrest? All right, uh, favorite character. Um, I have to say, yeah, Emotep. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, he's the villain, but uh, yeah, he's you know, like Crow's point out, Karloff has such a presence, commands such a presence in the role. Um, and uh, favorite scene, I would have to agree when he gets uh, when he disintegrates when he disintegrates. Uh, favorite mummy movie. Uh, I would say this one. Actually, well, I would say this one. Uh, Hammer's Mummy, the uh, the mummy from 1950, 1959, also, and, and uh, Bubble Hope. Okay. Um, and I think one, uh, 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 with myself, I'm gonna have to go with Imhotep. Uh, love his character, uh, love the 
um, makeup uh, and his design. Uh, I think it's definitely interesting that he does he doesn't like kill people right off, right? Like in the very beginning, like he's got kind of like got his own like way of things, you know. Uh, it, 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 he's not a killer right off the bat. He's got he's got a mission, <laughs> you know. And, and he's fair. The only one he yeah. actually really wants to kill is the girl, just so he can get his love back. Like he doesn't. Well, he doesn't want to kill her body, just her soul. Anybody else, he just kills because they're in the way. Yep. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, does have a he does have a tragic backstory just because he loved this woman that was out of his league. Right. Yeah. But yeah, and, um... and, his, and his own father. Uh, you know, made him become a mummy. So you know, pretty, pretty, pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, guy never had a fair sh had, a, had a chance in life. More but, death. Uh, yeah, uh, I I like Imhotep, and I I do like the fact that he is uh, he is a very hypnotic character, um, so to speak, and a little bit Merlin esque. Uh, as far as favorite scenes, I do like the uh, the the sort of flashback that we get in the water a uh, bit a uh, bit uh, is history. I do like uh, how they kind of have like a a memory, kind of like they uh, they do in the in the the new uh, mummy, except uh, re uh, really no action, just more of a silent film uh, narration, you know. Uh, but uh, but at least we uh, we get a back uh, kind of a backstory, you know, into who uh, who and what he he is and how he became who he is, you know. So I, I think I enjoy that aspect of the uh, of film, and I do I do enjoy the ending where, where the gods are the are the ones that took care of the business uh, business that you know. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure th uh, that there might have been some uh, some way that the uh, the modern modern day humans might have been able to uh, to do away with him somehow. But uh, but I like the fact that it was a supernatural being uh, uh, th uh, that took care uh, care, uh, care of what was necessary. Like uh, the gods were watching to begin with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they were <laughs> they were not gonna let him get away with anything so um that being said did anyone else have anything else that they wanted to say about them actually i found the film that i was uh trying to reference it's called time walker mystery huh. science theater actually covered it as being from another planet but that's uh but yes, it's a, it's a mummy movie called Time Walker where there is an alien that was, uh, that was defeated in ancient Egypt and basically uh, stored secretly in one of the tombs. And then when they unearth it and take it back to California to study, uh, they steal uh, the mummy's treasure and he goes ape shit. <laughs> As you do. As you do. As far as my favorite mummy movie, I'm kind of torn between a uh, uh, between a couple. Um, I I like uh, Brendan Fraser's The Mummy because uh, 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 to be all fair and honest, uh, that is the film that you know kind of defined the, the mummy genre. Uh, at, I mean, after this film. I mean, there was a craze of it during the uh, during the thirties because we definitely have a mummy collection out there. But um, Dawn of the Mummy is a, a one that comes to uh, mind. Um, I do believe that there are a couple of recent one, uh, 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 one recent one that wasn't too bad. Uh, I don't I don't even want to think about Monster Brawl. That uh, that one was horrible. That was oh, that one was just a wrestling match with a bunch of monsters put together, uh, and uh, a mummy showed up uh, as a contender. 
uh but uh yeah um i think so uh, those are so uh, oh um and i think another one that i have to mention is the aztec mummy uh is one that i don't think it, 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 a lot of people have seen all too much but um there was a trilogy of films uh, about the Aztec mummy. They're all like subtitled or what, uh, whatnot. I believe, I believe uh, the first one was called Attack of the Aztec Mummy. Second was Curse of the Aztec Mummy and the Robot versus the Aztec Mummy. I do like that Attack of the Aztec uh, Mummy. So, <laughs> for those of you who like Spanish mum, uh, 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 mummy fil uh, uh, films that were subtitled in the 1950s. <laughs> Not so, me. Uh, but in any case, anyone else have anything else to add? All right. All righty then. Uh, thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Let us know down in the comments what uh, you thought of our discussion. And if you haven't seen this uh, 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 film, go and see it. I mean, it, it's it's definitely slowly paced, but it is one of the classic mo uh, monster uh, uh, movies of its time. And uh, it, it should at least be seen mm -hmm. at least once. Um, and next week, uh, I believe we are covering the 1999 uh, adaptation of The Mummy. So, uh, But uh, let us uh, go into our outros. Uh, Crawl, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, I'm uh, Crawl, a.k.a. Ron. Um... At the, at the moment, I'm uh, on disability, but working towards uh, having an online uh, business through affiliate marketing. And uh, hopefully, that I'll have an update that I'm doing well, well with that soon. Um, still kind of training right now, so uh, everything's not really all set up yet, but I'm working on it. Um, got some good deals on a lot of things out there. Um I don't. Uh, I don't have my own YouTube channel, but I come on this podcast and one on Sunday, and I'm on uh, Anime Discussion once a month, and um, I'm uh, around on other podcasts here and there as, as a guest. So I'm around. Uh, if you uh, watch some other uh, YouTubes, you might see me. Um, I, I love talking about uh, movies that uh, we watch, and uh, I love watching uh, TV and playing video games um right now i haven't really watched a lot of tv or movies um or play video games because like so i'm trying to do that business so i'm trying to put uh much effort into that as i can um so that's uh that's um, all about me all righty heading over to you Forrest. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do uh, I'm Forrest Bennett. I'm an independent film producer and actor based in Long Island, New York. I uh, just had a new movie come out recently uh, Camp, well, that I acted in called Camp Blood 66 Part 2, The Exorcism of the Clown, the 12th entry in the camp in the long-running Camp Blood series. I'll, uh, I also recently acted in a movie in uh, the upcoming uh, Amityville Turkey Day, which should be coming out this fall, where I reprise my role as the Reaper from, the, from Amityville Thanksgiving. And I'm um, also in uh, an upcoming, also in an upcoming troll movie called Bring on the Damned. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram under my is, name is not Gump, where I do comic book pickups. And uh, I'm also on a on a local on a pub, on a public access show here in New York called uh, Unger the Radar, where we just, where we review and discuss newer movies and TV shows. Uh, they have a YouTube. Uh, they, there's also a YouTube channel for that show. I've always got something going on in the pipeline. Alrighty, uh, heading over to you, Jake. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? <clears throat> All right, I'm Coda Bucky Jake. I'm the co-host of the YouTube channel Septum Sim vs. the World, uh, where we talk about physical media in all shapes and sizes. And uh, 
This past week, we finally got an opportunity to discuss my birthday pick, which is a uh, an interesting uh, anime called Karim. Uh, very, uh, very much a personal pick there, and um, met with mixed reviews. <laughs> <laughs> but it did make for an interesting discussion, so check that out. Uh, we'll have another anime, anime uh, coming up at the end of the month, um, this time a movie, which would be fun. Uh, and, of course, I think I'll be heading things up next week because uh, The Mummy was one that I put forward, and I look forward to that talk. Uh, meanwhile, um, I keep very, very busy. I have a, um, a full-time job working for uh, a local library system, but also am the co-founder of RVA Homegrown Natives, where apparently we posted our first availability of the season this spring, this morning and sold out our stock in hours. Wow. <laughs> so we are going to need to work double overtime <laughs> this month. Um, which is very hard because we're still having nights in the twenties, <sighs> but we finally got a greenhouse up, so that's awesome. <laughs> and like I said, busy, busy, busy. Uh, we 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 sowed seeds for over thirty species yesterday, so we're looking forward to seeing that ha- turn into something. And um, just doesn't leave a lot of time for viewing, sadly, but. I do try to get a little bit in and include my weekly viewings for this channel. I like to come hang out with these fine folks and see what we've got to discuss for the week. And um, this was a, an interesting, uh, if all, uh, unusually narrow theme that we have this month. And I look forward to uh, broadening the horizons a little bit next month. But uh, it's good times. And lots of lots of good viewing ahead. <laughs> all righty. Heading over to Tammy here. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Oh, uh, well, I'm David's fiance, and I enjoy going on this channel and another one and talking about different movies and listening to everybody's opinions and checking out some some new things. And um, really, uh, that's about it at this time of the year when uh, summer hits. I'll be out with my car. All righty. Heading over to you, Brandon. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, uh, I'm uh, Septum Sen of Septum Sen versus the World. Uh, we're on a hiatus for the time being. Uh, who knows when we'll come back, but uh, we are going to get to working on a project. Uh, there's a couple of things that we're shut down for. One is I'm working on trying to film uh, my movie, uh, Amityville Webcam, which I'm, I've got a couple scenes filmed and uh, mostly cast, so I'm hoping to uh, get some filming underway soon. And then we're also working on a particularly large project for the channel so that when we return, probably for the way this, cha- this project will work, probably this time next year. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we will uh, be trying to hit that uh next week uh i'll be leading a discussion i think on one of these channels because i'm moving the anime discussion over while the channel is on hiatus but uh, we are going to still discuss uh pompo the cinephile which is going to be a pretty cool movie to discuss next week and uh so i look forward to that and of course uh schlockaholics um we have uh, that coming up this saturday we are going to be talking about the uh, the Tim Ritter film uh, Lost Faith with uh, Joel Weinkoop uh, as the star there. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I look forward to seeing that uh, since I got my uh, Vinegar Syndrome copy. So uh, definitely going to be a lot of fun times. All righty. And my name is David Streggy. I'm one of the founding fathers of Inside Movies Galore. So thank you for coming along with us on this fantabulous journey that we've been having here, talking about universal monsters and uh, uh, the like. So hopefully you've had a pleasant journey. If not, uh, an extremely terrifying 
vi uh, visit uh, per se, but hopefully we didn't send you all screaming. But uh, we'll laugh maniacally. <laughs> maniacal laugh, maniacal laugh. <laughs> but uh, in any case, I also moonlight under a different channel uh, 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 called Delusions of Grandeur, uh, where. Uh, we also do something similar on the, uh, on the channel uh, where we go on Sundays uh, and talk about movies of all kinds. Uh, do so with Kroll here and uh, my fiance Tammy. And I think we have a lot of fun uh, uh, there. But I also do some video pickups and some video uh, reviews from time to time. So definitely check the channel out. Come back and uh, uh, join us. Uh, next week, where we will be uh, discussing the 1999 uh, uh, film The Mummy. So, in any uh, 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 case, I think uh, uh, we will bid y'all adieu, and uh, everyone say good night. Good night. Good day. Good night. Good night.